Hey guys, TJ back here with a sort of little bit of a blind review for Star Wars Battlefront 2. So, for those who don't know, I got the game as a Christmas Eve present. Um, my family, we had, we had, everyone had plans on Christmas Day, so we did grips and stuff uh, Christmas Eve, um, early in the day. So anyway, I got the game, like I said, and I've been playing it and trying it out, and I'm going to tell you right now, as a blind gamer, and for those other blind gamers out there who decide to try Battlefront 2, do not play Starfire Assault. Because one, you'll be flying into everything and dying all the time and you'll get frustrated. Two, you'll not be of any use to your team and destroying the enemy uh, capital ship or any objectives. There really isn't much you can do. Now yeah, you can fly around and there is some degree of 3D uh, surround sound. Um, so you can hear the horizontal stuff, but you cannot hear the vertical. That's that's the big problem. If flight simulation in games was good enough, and even first-person shooters or any games was good enough to hear, you could hear vertically, um, then flight sims and first-person shooters in general would be a lot better because then you can you know, hear what's above or below you, and you can actually fly, you can actually jump up and down, whatever, um, successfully. So, th that's the tricky part, is you can do it, it's just, it is so damn frustrating to try and fly a TIE Fighter, X-Wing, or any of this stuff, and it's just like, ah, it, it drove me nuts, like, I I played a total of, like, five minutes in Starfighter, so I was just trying out different fighters, like, okay, whatever, and I kept crashing into stuff, and I'm like, okay, isn't there some way... Like, some way I could lock onto an enemy and I could track them and follow them and shoot them. And I don't know for sure. Because I remember in Battlefront 2 that Pandemic made back on PlayStation 2. Um, in the Starfighter combat and stuff when you were in space. You could lock onto enemy ships and it was just constantly like locked onto them. You cannot unlock until they're dead. And, um, you know, your ship would always turn to face them and you'd be able to shoot them and stuff like that. So, you know, it was, you know, it was easier. <coughs> Sorry, my nose is feeling a little plugged or clogged. So, I mean, if you want to go for Starfighter Assault and you're blind or visually impaired of any degree, then go ahead and try it. Um, I wouldn't recommend it personally. I mean, the cool part is the sound design in this game. I will okay. I'll say this right now: the sound design in Battlefront Two is amazing. These the distinct sounds of each blaster in like blast or strike or galactic assault and the sound design of the tie fighters x-wing is the blasters for them the engines for them the sound design for the equipment and powers and lightsabers all this the sound design of weapons and armor and in general is awesome the soundtrack as well as too is they use sound the music straight from the movies and for example in heroes and heroes and villains um when you spawn as darth maul it plays the um little theme the duel of the fates theme when you spawn in, like, just a little few seconds, uh, as the door is opening on Phantom Menace, where it's, like, just, it, it draws in the epic, and, you know, de depending on the hero, depending on the villain, um, depending on what map, like, Kamino, I could tell my brother was, my brother was playing Battlefront 2 on, uh, was last, no, yeah, it was last night, he was on his PS4, because it's just a disc, so we have to go back and forth, but he was on Kamino, and I could tell he was on Kamino because it played the music from Kamino in Attack of the Clones. And you know, so it's distinct. You can tell which hero you're spawning in as, more or less. And uh, if you can't tell by the music, you can tell by the quotes. You can tell what map you're on, depending if you have music on or off. Because it's not a volume slider like most games. It's like on or off, which does kind of suck, honestly. Like, if I could, I'd make the vo the music volume like half and maximum, you know, just lower. So I can still hear it because it's pretty damn cool. But you know, it's on or off. That's it. Um... <clears throat> In terms of the raw gameplay, as a blind gamer, it is tricky because it is a very it, it's Star Wars. So you're bouncing, you're jumping around, you're dodging, you're rolling, you're you know you got some jetpack troopers, you're jumping around, flying around. You got like Boba Fett doing his you know, doing his thing. You got like so much crap going on. So for starters, if don't try Galactic Assault right off the bat. Don't try it off the bat because as fun as that game mode is. Holy hell. You might want to wait 
a while before you, you get some decent stuff going on in your classes and um then you can then you should try galactic assault but real key thing for uh, for me is i don't have a squad i don't have um a squad i can't even finish the word a squad i don't have uh, friends who are on battlefront 2 to be able to you know squad up because that's the thing is okay because that's the thing is it it function battlefront 2 functions like battlefield where it's like a squad you have your class you have your abilities you have this you have that which is true it's like a it's like battlefield but it's not because it is star wars it's battlefront there there are distinct differences and um <clears throat> and so for example for me i prefer the assault class or the heavy class because heavy i can take a ton of damage and deal a ton of damage and it allows me to, you know, have a little bit of reaction time, you know, so I can, you know, if I hear someone shooting at me, I'm like, oh, 180, you know, and blast them with a big ass heavy cannon. Um, assault, uh, they're just your, they're your, they're your typical infantry, you know, they have a blaster rifle, they don't have a repeater cannon, they have a blaster rifle, you have your thermal detonator, you have, you know, this and that, whatever. Um, officer is also a good one. I, I would play if I had a squad. Because officer, what they do is they're like the support rule. So they have a pistol. They have, they have powerful pistols. Um, they don't have rifles or sniper rifles or anything. But they just have a you know, pretty pretty standard pistol, you know, high fire rate and stuff like that. But um, what they do is they support the team. So when you... Uh, there's Apparently there is a counter in the bottom area of the screen. And it like fills up with numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 20 or whatever game mode you're playing. The maximum number is different. And what that means is the amount of teammates are in your field that will be benefited by your battle command ability. Now, there's a battle command, there's improved battle command, there's this, that. From what I understand, it is like a health boost, damage boost, like just buffs all the way around for your teammates. Like speed, health, damage, everything's buffed on your teammates. And you get battle points for that, and so you're able to call in... Um, like reinforcement troops, like jet troopers, Wookiees, whatever. Um, as well as they have like other, you know, other abilities, and they don't, that's the one that most people use on an uh, officer. But they have other ones. I don't remember all of them right now. And the last class is a specialist. Which here's the thing: specialist will be good because you can, you know, you can tag enemies and you can see them through walls, and it's, it's kind of pretty powerful. But the tricky is I, I can't see it, so I can't see to tag my enemies to tell my team to show my team. I was like, hey, there's a dude right here, you know, this dude around the corner, you know. Um, so I, I'm not very useful as a specialist. I'm more, I'm especially in Call of Duty and Battlefront and first person shooters, I'm close quarters to medium close to medium range. That's my niche, that's my specialty. I can't do long range very well because. You know, it's just it's just difficult, you know, because I can't see the enemies. So like, I can hear their gunshot, or or in this game, blaster bolt from a from a while away. But the tricky part is, it's not a hit scan. The blaster bolts are not hit scans. They have travel time. They have a distance. They have a velocity. They are projectiles in every sense of the word. And it makes sense because it's Star Wars. They they don't just they're not lasers. That just you pull the trigger just across the room in light years. It's it's like it takes it takes travel time. <laughs> So, <clears throat> so, from a blind perspective, Battlefront 2 is a very fun game, but it is challenging because if you're blind and you're, like, say you're, you're blind and visually impaired, and you play Call of Duty. Call of Duty is, like, the easiest first-person shooter you can play, because almost every other first-person shooter, they don't have hit scans, they don't have, you know, all this stuff, they have bullet velocity, they have or muzzle velocity, sorry, they have, you know, more realistic, you know, just stuff, and it's, it's a little more tricky to play. If you're blind and visually impaired, Call of Duty is really appealing because it's just so easy, you just pick up a controller and you can kill people. Not very hard, uh, especially World War Two. World War Two is really easy for me to play, for me personally. So, Battlefront Two, you gotta know how to play the game. It is... It is tricky, I'll say that. I don't even know if I have any kills so far, but I'm sure I have a couple, I have some assists. Um, but as far as I can tell, I don't have kills yet. And so, <clears throat> mainly because I'm so used to Call of Duty sound design that, you know, and that's one thing that I noticed is like the sound design, like I can hear people in front of me to the right, to the behind and stuff. 
but the thing that kind of bugs me is I can't tell if I'm entering a smaller room or a larger room or if I'm outside. I mean, I can tell outside, but, like, that's one thing that I remember in, like, World War II and Black Ops 3 is, like, you can tell when you enter a different room because there's different sounds and the sound design gets more condensed and stuff like that. In Battlefront, that's not a thing, so it's a little tricky to tell. I think the thing with me and Battlefront is my brother says, oh, you don't need a squad. You can still, you know, do... You know your one, your one man army thing. I'm like, yeah, you can, but it's more beneficial if you squad up and you have communication and stuff. Which just like any other battlefield, that's the same thing for Battlefront. You know, you squad up, you cooperate, you communicate. You have one person as each. You have at least two assaults, one heavy and one officer. Specialist. I mean, if you want to have one of the assaults be a specialist and tag enemies through walls and be annoying, then go ahead. But um, <coughs> anyway. So, let me talk about the game modes. So, the game modes I tried, I tried Galactic Assault. Um, I was only able to do one match because I did... The, the menus are a little tricky. I'll say they're tricky. Let's put it that way. Because it's L1, R1 to move through the different tabs. So, like World War II and some of the more recent games. And the menus don't loop from what I can tell. So, like... You, like, they don't really loop, so you can easily count 1, 2, 3, down, 1, 2, 3, right, whatever, to get to whatever you need to, you know, weapon, uh, game mode, whatever. But the tricky part is customizing your classes to different star cards, different blasters, different modifiers on your blaster, different this, different that.